Hello, and welcome to another m movie review with Bila Skitty, and this time, Joe Bartram. That's me. What are we going to be doing today? We're going to be talking about Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, the original movie from 19... 1990. 90. All right, Joel, let's get into this. What did you think? How did you find re-watching it? Okay, like, it's... I decided to go in, and I'm like, I'm going to go in like someone who's never seen this, who doesn't know anything about the Ninja Turtles, and try and watch it just as, like, a thing. You and Brent. To, com Blank to Blank. completely avoid all the nostalgia, because, you know, I, I owned this movie on VHS as a kid. I still have the soundtrack cassette. Like, I think it's the only cassette I still own. Wow. Like, I, I watch this movie a lot. And it turns out I failed completely in that task. I just spent the whole time, like, being delighted by nostalgia. But I think... I think it's a weird movie. Weird? Why, why weird? Okay, so the big things I took away from it watching it, like it's clearly a movie aimed at kids. Like I was, I was that kid at the right age to just be completely obsessed by Total Mania in the early 90s when they came out. Like buy all the toys, everything. This was a movie aimed to get money out of, you know, my family mm -hmm. through me, right? But watching it, the movie is, for a kid's movie, incredibly dark and i don't mean that thematically i mean visually just it's really dark it, there's not a lot of color it's very dark the whole movie you it know, was you can't true see shit. you're right it was quite dark yeah and um second like the amount of pop culture references in it that are not pop culture references that any child would get <laughs> and i realized watching it back i remember all these bits and i remembered the lines and i was getting flashbacks but not understanding them just understand oh that must be funny because michelangelo is saying it like he does, he does an impersonation of Rocky. I'd never seen what kid, like <laughs> ten year old in nineteen ninety, had seen Rocky, like and Cagney. He does yeah. an impersonation of Cagney. Yeah. I still don't know who Cagney <laughs> is. I certainly didn't know back then. <laughs> yep, that is fair. And it's so full of Jeopardy references, constant, constant jokes, which aren't even jokes. They're just references, and it's so bizarre. I still love it, despite. And as a kid, I thought it was hilarious. I think just because Michelangelo was saying it, so I knew it had to be hilarious. But That's right. Yeah. How many kids would know what cricket was in America? That too. <laughs> At least maybe that's kind of like they'd, they'd, they'd have heard of cricket, but it was some weird thing they didn't understand, so maybe that's yeah, a reference. That, yeah, but that, that's... Yeah, I don't... It's, it's bizarre. So re-watching again, what were your highlights? What did you, what did you enjoy? I very much appreciated the fact that Raphael is the worst ninja ever. He's a terrible, terrible ninja. Like, constantly going outside in broad daylight, <laughs> like, uncovered, uh, or at best, wearing a trench coat and a hat that make him look like a sex pervert. Um, I, loved, I loved, like, the, the ridiculousness of the, the Foot Clan's agenda. So what was the their foot, agenda? The Foot again? Clan's agenda. So the Foot Clan, get all these kids... Yep, you have a check. Yeah. They create, like, the ultimate kid warehouse hangout paradise <laughs> yeah. where there's arcade games and a, a really custom-built skate ramp and it's insane and awesome were and cots and they ninja train them. Were you put off by this kid smoking the cigar as well? I, well, that, like that, so, it, <laughs> like, all I saw in that was, like, it's immediately the scene from Pinocchio, right? Where yeah. All the kids, so they build the Pinocchio warehouse. Yeah. They get all these kids to do all this crime for them, which is so over engineered like the opening of the movie is a kid <laughs> picking a pocket right yep. someone walks past someone in the street successfully picks a wallet out of their pocket and then it's sucking suddenly like the fucking cold war right <laughs> like the that kid walks up and leans against a wall and another one walks past they make no eye contact so they don't know who the other person is. takes the wallet passes through half a dozen it's a fucking wallet yeah <laughs> it took you 10 dudes to pull off this operation of passing a wallet around so no one knows where it was like it and then they just keep amassing, they're stealing TV, stealing stuff, stealing stuff. But when you see the warehouse, they just seem to be piling this stuff up. The Foot Clan aren't taking over the city. They're not doing anything. <laughs> they're just being hoarders. <laughs> That's they're just like, and there's rooms that are just stacked with cardboard boxes and shit. No one's selling anything. Yep. yep. I don't know what Shredder's ultimate goal is for owning <laughs> so many fucking secondhand TVs. <laughs> That's how he's going to take over the... Well, he must, because he has that room where he's got them stacked and he's watching the news on 20 of them and throwing knives at them. So is it just to, like, support his habit of whenever he's upset destroying electronic devices? I, I don't so. fucking know what Shredder's plan is. But other than that, yeah, I loved it. Yeah, no, that, but that, that's a plan, I suppose. That's a pl I guess. I mean, like, yeah. you've got to have a plan. You might as well, you know, indulge yourself in TVs. Yeah. Isn't? I mean, like, le legitimately, like, highlights-wise, like... I was surprised at how good the turtles were. Mm. Like, 
I mean, I shouldn't be, though, though, Jim Henson, but I guess in my head I assumed they probably didn't look anywhere near as good as I remembered. They look fucking awesome. Yeah, I and thought they were fantastic. And each of them fantastic. has a different face. Like, even without the colours and stuff, you could still probably recognise each of them individually. They all look unique and they move unique. and Yeah, really good. Like, and... Like, the, there's no weird special effects. Everything's done with practical effects and done really well. Mm. And despite there are these dudes in these big foam, I assume, suits, like, the action's surprisingly good. They, like, they're doing kicks and stuff, and yeah. it's not looking like a big awkward guy in a, in wearing, you know, a bunch of pillows. Yeah, to like, they, they kick really cleanly. And yeah. And they look fantastic. And I'm like, wow, oh, you know what? I believe that. That's, I believe that looks yeah, that looks great. One thing I one thing that, that ruined it for, I you know ruined it for me. I in the cartoon, Raphael is this cool, calm, funny guy. Then in the movie they change his personality altogether and he's like angry, angry point of conflict. That yeah. changed my favourite turtle. Oh. I, I Raphael was my favourite. He became an angry bastard. I'm like, no, nah, I'll just like Donatello now. And it changed me. Changed really? it. Really? Yeah, because I think it just they ruined it. I mean, there's so many different versions of the cartoon. I mean, not the cartoon, the the, the, the franchise, I guess. Mm. But yeah, and Raph is typically the hot-headed, angry one in every version. But in the, the original, in cartoon. the '80s cartoon, yeah, it's. I guess he wasn't. I mean, none of them were that angry. It was all, it was all very light and happy. Yeah, the, yeah. the, the point of yeah, conflict or problem was Michelangelo, who was, you know, j joking around and, you know, partying and stuff. Getting and that was the problem. But they had to change it. They're like, no, 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 Raphael, he'll be angry all the time. I'm like, no, don't do that. Yeah, interesting. Okay, yeah. That was the problem. So you were, you were a Raph fan? I was a Raph fan. And then Donatello. Okay. Uh, my, my, my boy was always Michelangelo and it's sort of stuck out no matter which iteration of Ninja Turtles it is, Michelangelo has always been my favourite. I always I use Michelangelo to judge whether it's good or not. Like if, if they can make Michelangelo funny, yeah, I like this version of the Ninja Turtles. I thought he was funny in this one. He was funny. I, I, I really liked when uh, Splinter's like, let us meditate. And then they start doing that dance to that weird song. <laughs> so yeah, weird bits like that. Like the, <laughs> that that's laugh. like the first time it really gets like a kid's movie, right? Like yeah, yeah. up until then, you know, it's it's news reports, it's different things. And then suddenly it's wacky total hijinks in the sewer. But it's so dark. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's, it's bizarre. And Splint, yeah, Splinter looked good. Mm -hmm. It all looked good. Uh, there was some, some weird plot points that don't entirely make sense, but it's, it's, it's a kid's movie. That's fine. Yep. Um, Casey Jones is not the guy from Law and Order, but looks exactly like the guy from Law and Order. He's Elias Katias, who's not the guy from, like, I've always gotten confused by this. Yeah. Like, there's two actors in Hollywood who look exactly the same, and Casey Jones is one of them. I think he's the one that was in Cyborg 2. Oh, I don't, didn't watch Cyborg 2. You didn't watch Cyborg 2? No. Did you watch Cyborg? No, I did not. Okay, well, yeah, that's probably why you didn't see the second one. Yeah, that's probably why I didn't do a bit. Yeah, that has nothing to do with this movie. Um, yeah, but I thought it was—I thought it was really good. I had a really fun time. Like, I was really surprised watching it, and like, oh yeah, that's kind of funny. I, yep. I didn't notice how dark it was until you actually mentioned it now. Like, yeah, it's just uh, most of the screen in every shot is just black. Yeah, and even the few scenes during daylight, like it's so washed out, like it's overcast. Yeah, like there's just no brightness in this movie, and I thought that was like—I don't know whether that's a stylistic choice or whether that's like. Maybe because the original Turtles comic was quite dark. It was very dark. Um, in terms of visual design, because it was, you know, a parody of, of Daredevil. So, like, maybe the whoever was doing the cinematography and planning that stuff was basing it on the comics, mm. whereas the people, you know, writing it were basing it on the cartoon, which was yeah. the, the big successful thing. So that's why you've got this sort of kids' movie story and gags and goofiness, but the visual side looks like it's... Yeah, it looks like a gritty 90s superhero movie. It looks like, you know, Tim Burton's Batman in, mm. in its colour it, palette. You're right, shots. it, it yeah. does a bit. Well, one last thing which I thought bugged me a little bit. I didn't like Splinter's background. I, really? like, I like the Splinter that, you know, is the, the sensei, the master. Then he gets turned into a rat, not the rat in the cage that follows his sensei's moves. Yeah, it doesn't make like, a lot of sense, to be fair. <laughs> yeah, I was like, no, no. But um, that, oh God, it's been a while. But yeah, that's the cartoon that made it, made it so he's the master who turns into a rat and, and put those l rules for the, the mutagen where you turn into like 
a hybrid of whatever animal you last touched. Yes. So he last touched the rat, Rats. they last touched the uh, Splinter, so they turned... Like, that was just that one cartoon. Really? Every other iteration, Splinter's always been a rat. They're all animals oh. that just become highly advanced by touching oh, I the never knew. I never knew that. Yeah. Wow, there we go. So, so it was a weird return to form for that. But as a kid, I was hugely bugged by that as well. Because yeah. I knew my, my law. Yeah. And the, that doesn't match the law I grew up with. Rawr! But yeah, I don't know. The Having him being a human, like, he's slightly weirder but also makes a lot more sense than the just, I don't know. It was kind of cute seeing the rat puppet in the cage being, yeah, Wah! it bugged me too much. But anyway, let's conclude this. Okay. What did you give this out of 10? How did you find it? This is the kind of thing I should have this is, this is gonna be I knew you, I, I should have known you would ask this. You this is going to be interesting because you're going to have nostalgia hit here. And yeah. it's going to, like my nostalgia hit hits it up a little too. Yeah, I mean, I... I don't think... Or can you grade it? Yeah, I, I mean, I have to grade it with the nostalgia, right? Yeah, you have because to. Because if someone had no nostalgia for Ninja Turtles whatsoever, I wouldn't go, oh man, this is a great movie you need to check out. Yep. No, you could happily go your whole life never seeing this. If you're a person who grew up with the Ninja Turtles and you're like, oh man, does that movie still hold up? Am I going to enjoy watching it again? Yes, you are! It's still really good. So, I, I don't Watch know. Watch it. Uh, is it the best Ninja Turtles movie? I don't know. I'm gonna to have to rewatch them all now. Uh, but it's good. Uh, let's go. Let's go. It's it's eight. It's a fun nostalgia trip. Yep, that's a good call. I'm gonna give it seven. That rat thing and the Raphael thing still plagues me. But anyway, on that note, thank you so much, Joel. I appreciate it. And yeah, so like, comment, subscribe. Tell me what you think. I want to know. Uh, till next well, time. Well, hold up, hold up. Can we just so yes. the, the 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 you know the big emotional high point of the movie was at the end they did the the, the cowabunga. Oh, the cowabunga, the, the, yeah, the they, high they, five. They close it. Yep. So uh, I think we need to. <laughs> all right. So. But but they, in the in the show they don't actually touch hands. <laughs> <laughs> These big foam padded fists. All right, we'll give it a one, two, one, two three. three cowabunga! Ah ha ha! I made a funny. Ah, ah. That was what that was. What <laughs> that's Splinter that's said. What he said. I don't think I hit that button. <laughs>